I'm Guy Dull, CEO of Pride Corp. The month of June is a very special time for the LGBT community, and we've partnered with Take Facts to tell you it's okay to be gay. Your identity is valid, and we understand your struggle. I mean, not me, I'm straight, but I did know a lesbian in uni, and she was very nice. In celebration of Pride Month, we're releasing a range of exclusive LGBT merch, and to show solidarity with the queer community, we're temporarily changing some of our branding. Make sure to check out our LGBT minifix. There's Dumbledore, Ellen DeGeneres, and Snowflake and Squarespace. And don't forget to use your filter for the three sexualities, rainbow, pink and blue, and other pink and blue. For those of you with less marketable identities, we were going to make filters for you, but we forgot. Be quick though, these filters will disappear from the storefront on the 1st of July, when it stops being profitable to pretend like we care. I mean, if you want, you can keep them on to change your profile pic, but like, <laughs> that's all from me. But remember, everybody, homophobia isn't very poggers. <laughs> Fluorine is the biggest tart on the periodic table. Nothing against tarts, the sexy kind, the jammy kind, and the sexy jammy kind are all good in my book. But fluorine forms chemical bonds in the same way that a randy dog forms a working relationship with the teddy bear postal delivery service. Other than a handful of noble gases, fluorine will form compounds with literally every other element on the periodic table. Or at least in the case of tennessine and organesson, strongly predicted to form compounds with them. Kinda hard to check on account of their atoms existing for about a millisecond at a time. Pure fluorine is a noxious yellow gas, and due to its toxicity and reactivity should only ever be prepared under strictly controlled conditions. If fired from a pressurised tank, fluorine gas will react with anything and everything it touches in a choking cloud of toxic yellow smoke, you included. The reason fluorine is so reactive is down to a property known as electronegativity, usually designated with the Greek letter chi, otherwise known as the letter X's cool European cousin. The more electronegative an element is, the better its atoms will be at attracting electrons. There are a few ways to determine the electronegativity of an element, but most chemists use a measure called the Pauling scale. Granted, the math looks a bit hideous, but it isn't as scary a concept as it seems, pinky promise. Each element is a assigned a number from 0 to 4 based on how strongly its atoms attract electrons when forming bonds with hydrogen, which for historical reasons is fixed at 2.20. As a rule of thumb, the further an element is to the top right of the periodic table, the more electronegative it'll be. Ignoring helium, neon and argon, all of which are too stable to form bonds with hydrogen under standard conditions, and the crazy radioactive elements which are too unstable in large amounts to form anything other than a very big boom and a lot of dead scientists. Fluorine is the most electronegative element in existence, coming in on the Pauling scale with a whopping 3.98. Experimental evidence tells us that full and half shells of electrons provide atoms with stability, and fluorine atoms have five electrons in their outermost shell, so they're only one away from making a full shell of six. This makes elemental fluorine extremely dangerous, so anyone using it without proper training will either need a very fireproof house or a very understanding landlord. The first person to theorise fluorine's existence was the French scientist André-Marie Ampère. Despite originally training as a math teacher, Ampère made enormous contributions to electrodynamics, particularly in the study of electrical current. What an absolute unit! You see, it's funny because the ampere is the unit of electrical current. Please clap. <laughs> While working at the Ecole Polytechnique in Paris, Ampere was investigating the properties of hydrofluoric acid, a colourless, highly corrosive substance used in the production of non-stick frying pans and the reduction of human flesh into pale, watery sludge. Hydrofluoric acid is a uniquely nasty compound, and most chemists will never use it unless there's absolutely no alternative. Like all acids, HF molecules want to donate their hydrogen atoms to other molecules, a chemical process known as protonation. If hydrofluoric acid is dissolved in water, it will dissociate to give two ions. The first is a positively charged hydronium ion, usually written as H3O plus in textbooks, but the actual structure is a bit more complicated, you know, because water loves to make our lives awkward. But the important product of this protonation is a negatively charged fluoride ion, written F minus, and these are what make hydrofluoric acid so dangerous. Fluoride ions can readily be absorbed into your body through your skin, and if they get in in large amounts, you're in for a bit of a problem. In high enough concentrations, fluoride ions will start vigorously reacting with the positively charged calcium and magnesium ions in your bones and muscles. It will also eat through the cells in your nervous system, which amongst other things are responsible for pain detection. Your body will essentially start to dissolve from the inside out, and worst of all, there's a good chance you won't even be able to feel it until it's too late. Now in the interest of making this video less unnecessarily gruesome, not all the fluorine's applications are that bad. In fact, in low concentrations, fluoride ions are actually highly beneficial to human health, particularly the health of your teeth. Tooth decay is primarily caused by the buildup of bacteria in your mouth, which sustain themselves on the sugar in your food. When bacteria metabolise sugar, they produce lactic acid, a compound that will eat through the enamel protection 
affecting your teeth. Enamel erosion can further be brought on by acidic drinks such as cola, a drink high in phosphoric acid, or as I like to call it, liquid cavities. Don't be fooled by the differences in sugar content in regular Coke and Diet Coke. Both of them are pumped to the gills with phosphoric acid as a flavouring additive, and as such, there's basically no difference in how bad they are for your teeth. But fluoride ions help protect your pearly whites by changing the chemical makeup of your enamel. Upon being exposed to fluoride ions, enamel will partially remineralize itself into fluorapatite, a mineral that is much more resistant to lactic acid than ordinary tooth tissue. Because of this, fluoride salts are often used in toothpaste to promote the growth of strong teeth, and many countries in the developed world add tiny amounts of fluoride to their drinking water, a practice that has come with its fair share of controversy, as shown by the like ratio on this video by the American Dental Association. When it comes to topics like water fluoridation, misinformation swills around the internet like turds in the swimming pool of a hardline conspiracy theorist. Despite 70 years worth of chemical research showing the benefits vastly outweigh the risks, I still see videos like this. Wake up sheeple, fluoride is a poison! It's added to water by the government to calcify parts of your brain, making you weak and submissive and vote for socialists, woo! First off, yes, in high concentrations, fluoride ions are pretty nasty, but the levels in drinking water are way below the levels needed to start causing actual harm. Fluoride ions occur naturally in all drinking water, and in some parts of the world, particularly those that rely on groundwater, so-called natural water actually needs to have fluoride removed from it to make it safe to drink. Another habit of fluoride sceptics that would earn them a frowny face in the GCSE chemistry paper is that many of them use the terms fluorine and fluoride interchangeably. The one with an ene is an element and is a toxic yellow gas, the one with an ide refers specifically to F- ions and is the stuff you get in toothpaste. No, it's confusing, but hate the game, not the player. The mind control conspiracies, meanwhile, stretch all the way back to the 1950s when water fluoridation was accused of being a Soviet plot to smushify the brains of the next generation, making the country more receptive to communist indoctrination. Well, not being funny, but if that was the plan, the 1980s must have come as a bit of a shock. Like, the American Communist Party's really thriving these days, lad. I'm sure the capitalist elite is cowering in fear of, like, three old men, two liberal arts students, and one cat girl with a PhD in anarcho-socialist metaphysics. Getting back to the history side of things, Ampere hypothesised that hydrofluoric acid was composed of hydrogen and an undiscovered chlorine-esque element in 1810. Scores of scientists pictured themselves as the discoverer of this weird new element, not realising the dangers involved in working with fluorine's compounds. The chemists that were daring slash clever slash moronic enough to rise to the challenge have been christened the fluorine martyrs by historians, and many would have their lives cut drastically short through working with such dangerous compounds. A bearded Parisian chemist by the name of Henri Moissan finally succeeded in isolating fluorine in 1886. Moissan's technique involved taking a bath of hydrofluoric acid, doping it with potassium salts, and running an electrical current through it at low temperatures until fluorine and hydrogen gas were liberated at the electrodes. Moissan did such a good job with his research that a variant of his setup is still used today to make industrial fluorine, and he was awarded the 1906 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his research, but shortly after the award ceremony, Moissan died from an aggressive case of appendicitis, his immune system ravaged by decades worth of exposure to toxic compounds. Moissan's experiments with fluorine almost certainly prematurely ended his life, but without the help of a time machine or a nursing student with a module or two and necromancy, we'll never know for sure. Now, as we always say here at Take Facts, don't ask questions, consume tap water, vote for socialists. Vote for socialists. Please. Just one vote. It'll work this time, lads. Honestly.